radiated fantasy dream. I was downtown, sitting at a small round black table outside of the Thames River greenery, sipping on my coffee, smoking a camel-filtered cigarette, talking with a man who lives on a boat, about the philosophical aspects of dreams, heaven, earth, predictions of the world, answering the questions of angels and life in general. In the middle of this intense poetic conversation, I look over my shoulder and I see this black, thick smoke rising up from behind some buildings. I motioned for the man who lives on a boat to look over so he could see, and when I looked back myself, the smoke had intensified and I could now see the fire that was spitting the smoke out of its burning fingers. I impulsively got out of my seat and walked at a quick pace up the street and behind the buildings where the source of the fire was coming from. By the time I got there, I was astonished to see that the fire had transformed into a wall of translucent heat extending in opposite directions as far as the eye could see and rising at least 200 feet. What was equally astonishing was the massive amount of people there, firemen, police officers, businessmen, pedestrians, and various street people just standing there in awe. In the center of this wall of translucent heat, a tube of swirling fire spat out of the ground and shot up towards the sky and touched the heavens. In the center of this tornado of flames were large balls of molten lava also shooting upwards, staying inside the tube of swirling fire, except one. One of the balls of molten lava only shot up maybe 300 feet, then broke through the tube of fire and started falling towards the crowd. Everyone started to scatter in a panic, going in all different directions, tripping and falling over each other. One lady accidentally got her face smashed in through a car window by a horde of eight-year-old kids. Me, I just stood there watching the ball of molten lava fall to the ground beside me. I stepped back and it exploded, splattering its lava on the horde of eight-year-old kids that accidentally smashed that lady's face in through the car window and they started screaming and melting until there were no more eight-year-old kids left to see. I got a little frightened, so I ran up the street and up a 500-foot hill it miraculously only took me two seconds, I'd say. On top of this hill was a bank surrounded by an iron fence. I saw two cops at the front door of the bank trying to break in. I yelled to the cops, hey, what are you doing? The cops responded, we're robbing the bank. In return, I said, oh. Then an old lady walked up to me. I recognized her as the cashier to the Salvation Army. She said she wanted to rob the bank too, so I helped her over the fence. The situation was a little odd, but at the time I didn't think anything of it. I turned around and looked down at the city and it looked calm. No wall of translucent heat, no balls of molten lava, no nothing. Then a nuclear bomb exploded in the center of downtown, causing a small mushroom cloud to form at a 45 degree angle. It started to shoot waves of transparent green radiation in all directions. I dodged a few, but there was one I just couldn't avoid, and it consumed me. I felt this enormous amount of energy filling my body, and I felt like, like, a superhero. And I started to fly upwards as fast as I could fly, going faster and faster, and then I seemed to explode and become a part of everything, and was happy.